Okay, so behind me here, we have the Browning Defender Ridgeline cellular camera. And we're going to be kind of talking about it today. I have three of these cameras and I've now owned them for a couple years, which makes me feel comfortable enough to kind of do a review video on them. If you've checked out our page before, you'll see we do a lot of unboxings for some of these cell cams. I mean, we've tested a lot of them out. This camera is the one that I have decided to settle on just because for me, it has worked the best. And we're going to go through all of the specs and all the pros and cons of this camera. Um, but we're also going to go through kind of how to set the camera up, how to navigate um, the app and the website you use to actually look at the videos and just kind of how these cell cams operate. Because um, when it comes to purchasing a cell cam, if it's your first one, it can kind of be a daunting task when it comes to setting it up with your wireless carrier, um, making sure it's set up correctly, and then checking and how to get your photos. Um, it's actually really easy to do and you don't need to have a whole lot of tech knowledge to be able to operate one of these. Um, so we're just going to go through everything about the camera and we'll also go through how to set one of these up out of the box. That way you can get one of these out on your farm and get photos getting sent to your phone right away. So let's jump into it. So you can set up the date and the time right here. Um, make sure you have this set. That way you know what time you're actually getting the photos because the photos can be delayed and you set up to how often you want this camera to communicate with your application so there's operation modes i have it in trail camera mode um, you could pick the photo quality i have it in high you could see there and all you have to do is just click down through um, the menu here um, and it's a pretty easy service so video quality i have on high even though i don't use the video um, you could set your video length you could set your picture today i set it for 60 seconds that is so it's not taking just a bunch of photos of anything that's moving through here if we have a really windy day i don't want it using up all of my photos um, the multi-shot mode i have it in three shots um, so it's going to take a three photo burst um, there's a bunch of different settings for this so you can set it however you like um, you can set the temperature so you know what the temperature is when it's taking photos. And then I also name my camera. Um, that way I know which camera I'm viewing on the property. Um, there's image data strips. Um, you can do a motion test, which is really nice because it'll actually show you where it's picking up motion out in front of you. That way you know where it's going to pick up the deer when they come through. Um, and then you could detect the range that it's going to go out to. So I have it on 80 feet because that's the farthest setting. Because once this corn is cut, the deer could be out there pretty far. Um, and I'm in Colorado, so I'm not able to come back here and reset any of these um, before I'm here um, for the season. You set the trigger speeds. And then everything else, I pretty much leave the same. You could delete flash long range you want to make sure your lte and all of that is on and you can also check your network status to make sure that you are connected and to make sure that you get signal before you actually leave the camera here i however always make sure it takes a photo of me and sends it to my phone before i leave that way i know everything's working properly that's the lte test it'll test to make sure that um, you're getting signal. So all of these things are explained in the manual and it's really easy to do. You just click through the menu here and then when you have what you want, you just hit this E button and then you can select from the options that come down. Now, once we're here, you can hit mode again and you'll see the delay is starting. And from this delay, it should start taking photos once that gets down to zero. I always, like I said, make sure that it's actually taking photos. So I like to read the number 595. One thing about this cell cam is you do have to have an SD card in it, even though you might not be using the SD card. It still saves everything to this camera. Um, I found the camera to be really reliable and I wasn't finding very many things on the SD card that I didn't get sent photos to my phone. So we're gonna walk in front of it a little bit. And then we'll check to make sure that it actually sent us photos. So with this Browning cell cam, I've had it now um, for over a year. Um, some of the aspects I really like about it, one is the battery life. Um, being a resident of Colorado and having a camera 900 miles away, I don't have the ability to come and change out these batteries every time. So this camera takes 
I believe 16 AA batteries. I always put Duracell alkaline batteries in it. Last year, this camera run all season from July all the way until January, and it never needed a recharge. You can check the battery status through the website, the same one you use to look at your photos, so you know if you're running low on battery. Um, one of the things I also like about it is you can change all of the settings from the app or the website. So I can change the burst speed, I can change the quality of photos, I can change every single aspect from that phone, that camera, I can change from Colorado, so I can change everything on the fly. So if I set this up and then I get on a plane in a couple days and I fly home and I realize that I did not set something up correctly, I can change it. The one thing you cannot do is turn it on. So you can turn this camera off remotely, but you cannot turn it on. Once it's off, it loses signal um, to the network and then you don't have access to mess with it. So just make sure before you leave that you at least have the camera on. Um, those are the aspects I really like about the camera. Um, when it comes to quality of photos and stuff like that, I don't find it any better than any of the cheaper cameras that I have found. That being said, I'm not, I do not have the camera set on the highest HD quality setting. The reason for that is because it actually costs more money to set it on HD. So I'm currently paying um, for two cameras. Um, my father just purchased another one, so I guess I'm going to have to bump up the subscription package. But right now I'm paying $17 a month um, for this camera and then another camera on another farm. Um, that does that only includes 10 HD photos. Now once you set this to HD, all the photos are going to be HD. So it does me no good to set it to that because I need this to take away more than 10 photos. So I just have it set on the highest standard definition that I can, and the photos come out really well. Um, and I will show you a few examples of some of the photos we got right here on this farm um, at night and in the daytime so you can kind of see. Um, but for deer camera picture standards, they're pretty good. You're gonna be able to see the deer on your property. You're gonna be able to identify them at night. It has a pretty fast trigger speed where it can catch deer, you know, running by during the rut. Um, so I've been really happy um, with this camera. This camera is on the higher um, price end. I believe it's $180 um, for this camera and that is without any of the subscription packages. So the camera itself is a little more expensive. I have found it to be way more reliable than some of the other cell cams. Um, if you check out some of our other videos, Hunter um, gets real in depth with the Muddy cameras um, when they first came out and some of their new iterations um, that they were sending us um, and they just frankly didn't work very well on our old lease. Um, the camera would quit working. Um, we would drive or walk by the camera. It wouldn't take photos. And it was really spotty with how it connected to the network. And it was in a much better area than I am now. With these cameras, I have had two of them and I've had them for over a year. Um, I wanted to wait to do this review until I've had this camera out for a while. And I can tell you that last year, the battery la life lasted all season. It took photos and I never had to worry about anything with the camera. Once I set it, it worked exactly how it was supposed to work from the time I set it up to the time I took it down. And the ease of use with this um, gives me a lot of peace of mind when I have someone like my father, who's not real tech savvy, who may have to come and move a camera, switch a camera, he's actually gonna be setting out our other two cameras on a different property. Um, and I have full faith that he'll be able to do it because once I set everything up, all he has to do is turn the camera on. And even if he messes something up, as long as that camera's on, I can go on the application and I can set it how it needs to be. So that's a good peace of mind as well that once you leave, you're able to adjust and change anything. Um, the last thing um, I'll say about this camera, the one probably negative that I have found that is a big um, topic if you look at reviews on this camera is the mobile application. So this camera comes with a mobile app that you can download. I downloaded it and I have not found it to work at all. You cannot use it to set up your camera. You cannot use it to pretty much do anything. You can't use it to look at photos. It's pretty much a useless app and probably why it only has one and a half stars on the app store. So for the first few days, this was a real problem with me um, until I kind of read up on some of the troubleshooting. Um, and I personally use the laptop 
um, and the um, the website to view the photos, I found that the mobile application is really just unusable. So if there's one negative I would say about the Browning kind of system, it is that their mobile app, I mean, it quite frankly just sucks. You cannot use it. You go on the app and you can't even set up your cameras that way. So if you do get the Browning cell cam, what I will say is just go on a website. I even go on my phone and I just type it into Safari or Google Chrome on my phone and I search for the site um, as a web page instead of going through their mobile app. Um, that's probably the one troubleshoot that I've had to do with the system. Um, but once I kind of got around that and figured that out, it works really well. Um, we're walking in front of the camera now. We're kind of testing it out as we're making this video. And then I'm going to pull out my phone and make sure that it sent me photos. Okay, so welcome to Inside of My Computer. I wanted to touch on a few things um, that I spoke about out in the field uh, about the app. I also wanted to go inside of the app to kind of show you guys the features that are within it and how to access it and how to change the settings. So... For clarity, um, I was out in the field setting up this camera. That was actually last year. I never got around to actually doing this portion of the video. So it has now been another year. The cameras have been out now, I believe, for three years, and I'm still having great success with them. So when you're wanting to access your cameras and you're wanting to access the photos from them, um, I spoke about the app that you can get on Google Play or the App Store. I do not use the app because it just has a lot of bugs. It does not work very well, although I do see that it has more stars than it did before. So maybe they've improved some of those settings. I'm not 100% sure. I still access the app by typing in Strikeforce Wireless into your search bar. You can do this on your mobile phone. So I have an Android. You could do this on an Apple. Um, but instead of going through the actual app, I just search it into the search bar um, and you could set up shortcuts to make it easier for you as well. Um, once you click, I'm already logged in, so it'll have you set up a username just like everything else with your an email, a password. Um, it automatically logs me in um, and it is set up where it's gonna show me the most recent photos. So these are photos from this morning. You'll see that there's beans in the field now because again, this is a year later after I shot the video out in the field of me putting the camera up. Um, but funny enough, I put the camera in the exact same tree um, just because it's a good spot. So once you're in the app here, um, you can go to your cameras up here and it's going to pull up every camera that you have out. So I name my cameras Recruit 1, Recruit 2, Recruit 3. You can name them whatever you want. It just helps me keep track of where my cameras are. There's also a map function up here will actually tell you where your camera is at as long as the camera is on. So if you have some neighbors who like to come around and steal your cameras, you can actually track their location. Also, if you're somebody who puts your camera up and you don't remember where you put it, this is a good feature. It'll get you close to the location of your camera. It's not perfect, but it'll at least give you a general idea. I'm not gonna click on it because I don't want you guys to know where my cameras are. Um, but from this page, you can see the battery life, um, you can see the signal, and you can see the card life. Now, I put all three of these cameras up at the same time, gave them new batteries all at the same time. What you'll see here is that this camera last synced on August 24th and 5% battery. I'm going to assume that this camera is dead because today is September 2nd, 2024. It's supposed to sync multiple times a day and it hasn't in over a week. And if you're wondering why um, this happened, why this camera went dead so much quicker than these cameras, it is because if you look here, there is this bean sprout that grew up right in front of my camera and I can't get to it to adjust the camera. So that bean sprout grew up right in front of the lens or the sensor so every time a small gust of wind goes it takes a photo of the beans blowing around so um, just a word of caution when you're putting your camera up make sure there's not something directly in front of the camera um, if you click recruit 2 this is my camera which is still running um, you'll see it'll tell you how many standard images 
So the HD images I touch on in the video, um, I don't set my camera to take HD videos from the field, but what you can do on the app is once you get your standard images, depending on what subscription you get, um, my subscription, I get 50 HD images. So it's really nice. I can actually go onto the image that I want to be HD and then I can select it. So I usually just wait until I have a photo of a nice buck that I want to see a little better and then I hit the HD image and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Um, you can go over to your camera settings. This is really uh, the meat and potatoes of the site where you can go in here and you can set up your settings. So I have my photo quality on high. Um, it takes a three shot standard burst. So if something walks in front of the camera, it's going to take three photos and then it's going to go into a one minute delay. So after it takes those three photos, it won't do anything for a minute. You can set these for multiple different settings. There's a one minute, three minute, five. I think there's a 10 minute and even a 30 minute setting. So I set it for one minute. Um, because I know it's out in the field and as long as there's not a bean sprout in front of the camera, it'll only take photos of deer. Um, you can set your trigger speed. Um, down here, um, the camera sync schedule, so this is also important. When your camera takes a photo of a deer or whatever it takes a photo of, it's not going to immediately send you the image. You have to set a sync schedule for it to communicate with your phone. So mine is set at midnight, 7 a.m., 12 p.m., 4 and 8. So at these times, the camera turns on and sends all the photos that it hasn't sent yet to my phone. So anything that steps in front of my camera overnight, I usually get a photo of it at 7 a.m. the next day. Um, you can set these to whatever times you want and however frequently you want it to do. You can even set it as a continuous sync. I do not do that because the more your camera's on, the faster the battery dies. Um, I have all of these sync schedules and my camera is still at 78% battery and it has been up, I'm wanting to say since April um, and it is September now. So it has been up and has barely used any battery on these settings. Um, I've never had an issue with battery life with these cameras. Um, that recruit one camera that turned off with the bean sprout in front of it, that's th actually the first time I've ever had a camera go dead on me. So. Um, so that's how you adjust your settings. Um, when it comes to your photos, you can go to your library. There's a bunch of different ways to filter through your photos. Um, you go over here to the filter tab. Um, and let's see here. So these are some photos it took today. So say this image here. So say that I wanted to get an HD image of this, you would go up here and rec hit request HD. Um, and then it will download an HD version of this photo. It'll communicate with the camera at the next download or at the next uh, cycle. So you'll have to wait till 7 a.m., noon, 4 p.m. or 8 p.m. and then it'll send you another photo, but in HD, which is really nice. So you don't have to burn up all your HD images you have on the subscription. You can pick and choose which ones you wanna use your HD count on. You can download straight to your computer. You can favorite images so you can show all your buddies. Um, and then you can filter over here by date range, um, categories, uh, moon phase, temperature. So if you're curious, you know, when am I seeing the deer? Or when it's 40, 50 degrees outside, are the deer moving? You can filter using all of these um, settings, which is really nice. I usually use the type and I like to use the HD function um, because for the most part, HD photos are the photos that I save um, of the deer that I want to see. So if you hit the HD function, you'll see um, these are some of the deer we have from this year. You can see, you can zoom in here. Um, for me, the quality is more than good enough. Um, if you're just wanting to see what's on your property, um, this has worked really well for me. This is the HD quality that you get during the day. Um, again, you get a three photo burst. So you're getting boom, boom, boom. That way you get three photos of the same deer. You can set that however you want. Um, here's a nighttime shot. So this is a good example of how far out uh, the, the IR will reach at night. Um, that deer is probably 
I'm going to say 40, 50 yards from the camera. He's kind of hard to make out right there on my cursor. There's a buck out in the bean field. Um, so at night, you're not going to get as far of a reach with the IR sensor, um, but you can set it. I have it set for as far out as it'll go. Here's a nighttime HD shot with a deer right up in the camera. Um, so you can kind of get a good idea of your picture quality you're going to get. Here's a deer that's a little further out there during the day. Um, you can zoom in, you can download it. Um, I've been really happy with uh, my Browning cameras after using uh, Tacticams. Um, we've had Tacticams sent us, we've had Muddy cameras sent us, we've done reviews on all of them. Um, all of them have their benefits, all of them kind of have their downfalls. I use the Browning cameras. So I love the Browning cameras. For me, they are superior to anything that I've used in the past. Um, the app is the only real downfall is that you have to use the website version. You can't use the mobile app. It's really not a problem for me. I just search it every time and go in. Um, I like to use my laptop anyway, so I'm already using the desktop. Um, if that's something that really bugs you out, um, maybe use you know one of the different cameras. Uh, we do reviews, like I said. We got a tact cam review. We got a muddy cam review. Um, I really like the Browning, so I'm going to continue to use them. So if you have any questions about the Browning cams, um, send us an email, send us a message. Uh, we'll try to get back to you. Um, but other than that, I hope this video helps you um, either set up your camera or decide what your next cell cam should be. Uh, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.